Emulating the look of watercolor is really challenging on the iPad. So in this video, I am going to share a few techniques that will take your Procreate drawing a step closer from looking like it was drawn on glass to looking more like it was drawn with traditional media like watercolor. I will be going over what brush I use, how I pick colors, and techniques that are used to make this possible. And make sure you stay to the end for my secret sauce for adding the watercolor paper effect to your drawing. Hi, my name is Henry, and on this channel, I teach architecture drawing, share my career thoughts, and occasionally nerd out on tech tips in architecture and design. First, I wanna talk about a few benefits why I color on the iPad instead of printing the drawing out on paper and use traditional medias like pencil and marker on it. Like the flexibility you have with drawing in layers, color can also be done with utmost flexibility. I try to organize my layers based on their materiality. So things like concrete, glass, and wood will be drawn on their own layer because their material is pretty dissimilar to each other. But grass, trees, and you know vegetation can share a layer because their tone is fairly similar and close to each other. I follow this workflow so it makes it much easier if I need to tweak their individual colors without impacting other materials. And usually I am quick to pick the color in the beginning, knowing that at the end of the drawing, I can color grade with saturation, color balance, and curve adjustments. This is probably the biggest advantage of working on the iPad. Almost without fail, when I work with clients, I'm going to have requests to change and edit the work. And sometimes this will go on for many rounds. And if you are working with traditional media like watercolor, it's almost impossible to handle requests for change in a timely manner. Now to the cons. Trying to emulate real watercolor, pencil, and marker is very hard. And drawing on glass just isn't the same as drawing on real paper. On glass, drawing often looks flat, lacks depth, and doesn't have the natural paper look, especially the watercolor paper look. Procreate is actually really good because it's really loaded with many of brushes that tries to emulate physical brushes but my favorites are actually custom made and they are the marker brush and the watercolor brush. You can download them in the link below if you want. It's fairly straightforward to download and import them into Procreate and there's no need to change um, any settings except for the slider to make the brush bigger and smaller using this panel right here. Now, how to pick colors because this is more of a subjective topic to cover and I know people have very different stylistic preferences. So I'm just gonna share what my preference is and let you decide if this is something that you wanna adopt. Personally, I like a earthy and a muted sort of a color palette. In terms of color choices, I like to have at least two to three variations of each tone. And the reason for this is so I can have one for the shadow, one for the highlight, and one for somewhere in between. As you can see in the greens, I have about five variations of the swatches. And this is a custom swatch palette that I've created. If you wanted to use this, you can also download them in the link below. And now I wanna go through some of my coloring techniques. The most important technique that we'll cover here is called alpha lock, and how to use this to add depth to your drawing. To enable this feature, you can take both of your finger and swipe right on the layer, and you will see a little white squares that will appear in the background. Alternatively, you can also just tap on the layer itself and you can see the alpha lock is currently selected because I did the right gesture. So you can also turn this on and off using the layer property right here. When this is enabled, any paint or new actions that you do on this layer will only affect the pixels that were already here on this layer. Let me demonstrate why I use this on coloring a tree. First, I am going to select a brush, this one right here, and I'm going to trace around the edges of the tree to form a closed loop and inspect that there are no openings. And then I'm going to fill it with a solid color. Now turn on the alpha lock for this layer, which is currently on. And I'm gonna pick my watercolor brush and pick a swatch that's lighter than the color that I had previously painted with. And I'm gonna use the watercolor brush as I have selected here. And this is only going to affect, as you can see, I'm gonna pick a slightly larger brush, and this is only going to affect, you know, 
the pixels that were already here. And I'm gonna use this for my highlight to give it a sense that there's actually some light falling on it. And then you can do the same thing with the shadow. So with the shadow, I'm gonna go to picking a darker shade of this green. And then I'm just gonna paint on the opposing edge of this tree. And now you can see that this tree is no longer looking like a flat kind of a tree as we had it before. And this is just gonna make it a little bit more dynamic and more three dimensional. So this is basically the same technique that can be applied to any subject matter really. And you can see from this drawing, I've, I've used this in all around over my vegetations with areas that are a little darker than others to indicate a sense of light that are falling on it. Next is coloring layers, which I already mentioned in the beginning, but this has another added benefit in practice. When you're coloring a scene like this, you can slowly build up your composition from things that are in the background, like the sky, and then the vegetations and the greenery, and things that are in the front, like the architecture, the different materials, can be slowly added on top. And you can see that this is built on top of each other so that the materials that are closer to you will eventually mask the materials that are in the, f in the far ground. So for example, the sky is usually the furthest in the scene. So I'm gonna start with the sky. And you'll see the sky actually bleeds into the areas where there are tree lines in the far ground as well. This is why I built my greenery on top of it. So I don't actually need to erase the parts that bled into other part of the drawing. And the same thing with the concrete, the glass, the wood in the foreground and uh, the ground and other buildings. This is just a more strategic way to color to save some time by not needing to color everything inside the lines. And for any reason that you actually want to do some erasing, what I would recommend is actually pick a eraser with the same brush. So if I started with watercolor, I'll pick actually the eraser with the watercolor uh, property and I will do my erasing um, just around the edges. And what this is gonna do is just going to make that transition a little smoother and a little nicer between where you're erasing and where your color is. Another tip is the brush pressure sensitivity. I like mine a little bit more sensitive than the default setting, so I have it set like this. I think this responds better to my own pressure and I'm able to vary the intensity of the color a little bit more. If you have watched this far, here is the final secret sauce to making everything look less digital. So here in the gallery, I have this watercolor paper texture and I'm going to load this into Procreate. So in the layers, I'm going to load this on top of everything else. And the important thing here is to set this layer to overlay. And voila, you can see that instantly this original drawing will have the paper, watercolor paper texture really nicely blended into it. And to fine tune this watercolor paper texture even more, you could go into your curve adjustments and kind of tweak the curve of this paper and uh, this will allow you to intensify the texture and bring out the little dark part of the watercolor paper a little bit more. But what you're gonna find is once you do this, this is also going to make your entire image a little bit more saturated. So if that's the case, you might wanna just uh, desaturate your entire image at the end as well. Finally, towards the end of the illustration or a sketch after the composition is really dialed in and the colors are complete, this is when I will spend a few minutes to fine tune the colors. And because my layers are all individually separated to different materials, this makes it really easy for me to, let's say, if I wanted to change the color of this wood siding, I can usually just go into my saturation and uh, slide around the hue, which will change the color of the, uh, of the wood. And also I can increase the saturation to increase saturation and the brightness accordingly. You can do the same thing with the color balance and the curves. These adjustments are fairly similar to what we have in Photoshop. And I will continue to tweak the individual colors until I'm really happy with it. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, at this point, I haven't really found a way to emulate a very realistic watercolor effect, 
but the techniques that I've demonstrated here should make your drawing a little less digital. If you know any other apps that can do this better, let me know in the comments below. All the brush settings, color palettes, and the sample Procreate file can be found in the links below. I just wanna thank you again for watching this entire video. I love to see what kind of drawing you come up with, so don't hesitate to tag me on Instagram. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.